WNBE TV hit the airwaves September 7th, 1963. A Sun Journal article two days later said the station launched its programming with, quote, a medium amount of technical difficulties. So tell me about this picture right here. Now, Valentina, that is our very first uh, show here at WNBE TV. Librarian Eleanor Hawkins began reading to kids on Tell a Story Time three months after the station opened in December of 63. I remember we used to just absolutely burn up when we were uh, on a show. And one of the greatest things is that the lights are not as hot now. And there were noticeable differences too. Well, you know, uh, we were in black and white. In those days, TV stations also had artists who drew placards for commercials and special events. And this one was David Frazier, and he actually did this back in, I believe, 78. 78. 78. Mm. And that was our happy birthday card. Wow. Another wow, Miss Eleanor and Tell a Story were featured in TV Guide on December 2nd, 1967. Yeah. Now you still have the fader bars. I think we only had one and it was split. Tom Bayless was a director and studio camera operator in the station's early days, but he wore a number of other hats. Boiling the hot dogs for the kids show, Bozo show, I think it was. And I had a wife and, and two kids. I was 24 years old and going to college. So I ate every other hot dog. I can confess that now. <laughs> he went from boiling hot dogs to being on the air. Production manager came to me and he said, Bayless, have you got a tie and a jacket? And I said, I don't know, <laughs> which I really didn't. We lived in our little trailer, you know, with the two kids and all that. I said, what do I need with a tie? He said, you're going to be doing the sports at 6 o'clock. I said, I can't do any sports. He said, well, I just let the sportscaster go. He left the station after four or five years and decades later was elected mayor of New Bern. There's one lesson he'll never forget. And, you know, they, they always told us don't tear up the film because we have to pass it on. There's no film today and no videotape either. All these tapes now blast from the past. The station went nonlinear or tapeless in 2010. Video is now shot on these little P2 cards and uploaded to a computer. There were other changes along the way. WNBE became WCTI in 1970 when Continental Television bought the station. The addition of a new 2,000-foot tower in the early 80s meant a sharper signal and a broader viewing area. WCTI became a place of familiar faces and favorite anchors, including Jan Beam and Gary Dean. Jamie Turner was an anchor here from 2004 to 2009. My favorite story ever covered was the election of our first African-American president. I mean, to be able to sit at a news desk and be a part of that was one of the most remarkable things I think as a journalist I could have asked for. And speaking of milestones, when Virginia Foy joined WCTI in 1976, she became the first African-American news anchor in Eastern North Carolina. <laughs> they took it so pretty. I look so pretty. <laughs> I recently sat I down with the former morning show host for a tearful mm -hmm. interview and shared it's, some old station photos. This is one that I came across. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> look at, oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, I understand. look at, oh my God. Virginia had a major stroke in 2002 and had to stop working. Her speech is limited now and she's partially paralyzed. Even though she can no longer live on her own, her love for News Channel 12 lives on. Happy birthday, Channel 12. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you, God. Okay.